Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm going to show you how to build a trellis for, plant out, set up and run this. This is a smart irrigation drain to waste hydroponic system utilizing a moisture sensor which gives feedback to a smart tap timer that allows you to water passion fruit or any plant in a drain to waste manner from a gravity fed reservoir which allows you to grow hydroponic produce hassle free for long periods of time without intervention. I'm also going to show you how to build this arched trellis for passion fruit and I'm going to plant out and propagate these passion fruit for a few months before we get to this point. There'll be timestamps in the description so that you can jump ahead to whatever part of the video that you like. Okay, so as with most of my builds, there's a little bit of adaptation as we go. I actually started this build thinking that I'd be making a rain gutter grow system, a grow spike based rain gutter grow system like the one we did in our terracotta potted grow spike video where the grow spikes wick up from a rain gutter grow system which delivers nutrients gravity fed from a 1000 litre reservoir. However, I changed the plan about halfway through to adapt it to the current idea, which is a drain to waste hydroponic system. Now, the idea behind a drain to waste hydroponic system is that the nutrient feeds and it doesn't recirculate. So you really have to have your irrigation cycles timed with your plants so that you only feed the amount that the plant absorbs and have 10 to 20% runoff depending on the system design. The one that we're setting up today is going to be a smart system. However, you can get away with the system just on a tap timer if you don't want to go out and purchase the smart moisture sensor and the smart irrigation timer system with the Wi-Fi components and whatnot that is included within this build. So to start with, about two months ago, I potted up some black passion fruit, some Arabica coffee, and also a finger lime tree, which I potted up into a mixture of scoria, coco coia, and perlite, which was a ratio of about 60 cocoa, 20 scoria, and 20 perlite. I mixed that up in my mixer and filled the pots. Now, I did actually drill out holes in the bottom of all these pots for the grow spikes, but they're not actually going to affect the system at all that we're going to change over to in a second. So I potted up the Arabica coffee, the black passion fruit, and the finger lime. We won't be using the coffee or the finger lime today. I also potted up some propagated Panama red passion fruit that I wanted to utilize the containers that I actually received these black passion fruit and Arabica coffee in from the nursery that I purchased them from. So I left them to grow for about two months and I was just watering them in from the top with hydroponic nutrient. So kind of drained away, but I did have sources underneath the plants. I let them grow, I let them establish and they responded really well to that watering technique. Okay, so it's been a while since I planted these. And as you can see, uh, our passion fruit are doing wonderfully. This is all just drained to waste not exactly drain to waste. It is draining down into sources below our grow media. And what I've just been coming along and doing is watering them with a watering can. And our coffee plants are doing really well. And our passion fruits are doing extraordinarily well. And I'm excited to see how this system pans out. So what I'm gonna do now is, before we get to moving these, I am going to set up a trellis for the passion fruits and that is going to include this Rio mesh, which is just concreting mesh. And we're also going to use some large star pickets. So I'm going to lay this out and get the size of the area that I'll be laying the star pickets out on. Driving our star pickets, wire this to them, bend it over so we can make an archway that we can walk under for the passion fruit and whatever plants I decide to grow over the top of it. So let's do that. <laughs> Whoop, ah. 
And this is the area behind the chicken pen. So you would see this in most of the shots facing our dragon fruit. And I'm just going to be using these uh, 240 centimeter, 2400 star pickets. I'm gonna drive them into the first hole or the second hole to give me a nice sturdy hole to attach our wire mesh to. I'm gonna lay these out so that I'm able to run the mesh between them. And then I'm gonna attach the mesh. So I've got the steel laid out on the ground. You probably can't see it, or you might just be able to see it. Um, and now I've got to decide how high up I want the steel to start. Now, I'm not particularly worried about the bottom part of this being open, because that means I can fit large pots underneath and whatnot. So I'm probably gonna start the steel about halfway up the steel pickets. So that's going to dictate how far across the mesh is also gonna reach, because what I wanna do is I wanna balance it so that it comes up, over, and down the same amount on the other side. So I'm going to lift this up, tie it up. So I'm gonna tie the mesh on with just tie wire and pliers. My plan is if the sides collapse in, because this is actually above head height or just at head height, I'm going to have supporting pieces of between the steel pickets if the weight becomes too much and that'll just brace it from the center. These things are in the ground a fair way, so it's gonna be supported from the ground. It's just about how the whole trellis holds up as a single piece. So a nice symmetrical way of thinking about it is the height that I've got here is the width that I'm going to go across. So I'm just gonna measure that out and hit them in. And there it is. And I'm now just going to wire all of the middle sections together as well. And here is where we're going to diverge from the plan. Now, originally I had drilled holes in the bottom of all of these pots because I wanted to give them the ability to slip into a rain gutter grow system like this. However, I have wanted to try this out for a while now. This is the Holman Wi-Fi tap timer control unit. Now, this Wi-Fi hub will actually uh, control four of these tap units, which look like this. I've added in some inline tap fittings, um, but I may take them off and just use it as it's meant to be on a tap. This will allow me to control the flow of hydroponic nutrient from my 1000 liter IBC um, with a Wi-Fi controller. However, I'm going to pair it also with this. Uh, I've had this for so long, I've just been meaning to use it. Um, the box is ruined, but this is a smart moisture sensor. This is going to allow me to poke it into the cocoa mix and it's going to, well, it's gonna give me some app feedback as well as allow me to not feed when the system is already wet. Let's set that up and see if it's gonna work the way I think it's going to. All right, so that's our passion fruits set up where I want them to sit. Now I'm gonna run 13 millimeter garden hose from my IBC down to these passion fruit and I can start the feeders. So I'm gonna use the same drip irrigation feeders that I used in my bagged cocoa video, the last video that I uploaded. They are going to feed through gravity from my IBC. So the plan here is I'm actually gonna use poly 13 millimeter pipe because I've pushed barbs into a uh, hose, 13 millimeter garden hose before. They don't really seal as well as they do into the poly pipe. And at the end, I'm just gonna have a hose connection um, so that I can clip it and unclip it whenever I want. That means I can sort of 
move the system. I can change the pots up. I can change a few things, but I can leave the irrigation hose in place. I'm going to be poking four millimeter barbed elbows or straight barbs, whatever, into this pipe. Then I run four millimeter tubing up into our passion fruit pots and I've got adjustable flow tricklers that will just push onto the end of our four millimeter hosing. And I'm probably going to drill some holes out in the side of our pots so that it holds our hosing in place. And I'm just gonna zip tie it in place on the poles. I'm gonna do my best to try and show you how the setup's gonna work. So drill a hole for our four millimeter tube, which will just slide through our hole like so. Punch a hole into our 13 millimeter poly pipe and into that hole, I'm going to push a four millimeter barb. These are elbows, but you can have a straight barb if you like. I'm just gonna push this onto the end of our four millimeter tubing first. And I'm just gonna press this into our 13 millimeter pipe. Like that. And that hopefully will have sealed. And to the end of that four millimeter tube, we can add in one of our variable flow tricklers, which looks like that. And it just has a screw on the top that you can adjust the flow. And that will allow us to adjust our flow. I'm just gonna open it right up to start with. And we're gonna make sure that that is just right where the plant is in the pot. And I'm gonna do that for all of our plants. So I'm now going to run garden hose from my system back to my reservoir and then we can connect up the smart Wi-Fi tap timer and see how we can program it to irrigate these guys without wasting too much nutrient. Connect it up and I'll quickly show you how the system works. I turned on the watering function. Now this can happen either with the manual watering on the app, the manual button on the device or through your various smart functions. And it then just allows the water to gravity feed through from the reservoir, through all of our tubing and to our four millimeter irrigation pipe and through our drippers. This then feeds the plants for however long you set it up for, whether it's on a timer or turn it on and turn it off manually as you like. This is how the system irrigates. Through the thresholds that you set is how you can fine tune the irrigation of hydroponic nutrient into your hydroponic grow substrate. Okay, so I've had this system about a week running now and the one problem that I've found that I'm going to have is that I won't be able to give you any decent feedback on how the system works for a while to come because I haven't even had a single watering cycle from this because the cocoa is holding enough moisture that the passion fruits are still only down to about 65% moisture and the watering threshold that I've set this device to is about 40 or 50%. As the plants get larger, they will require more and more nutrient as they grow over the top of the trellis. And this watering cycle will become shorter and shorter because there will be more transpiration because of the larger leaf mass that they grow into. I do, however, want to run you through the system itself. So the system comes with three components. Two of those components are run by batteries. This device here is run by four AA batteries and the water sensor is run by three AAA batteries. The way that the system works is that there is a Wi-Fi hub that is plugged into a power point. That allows you to control the through power point so that you can control on on off to something like a light and that acts as a hub which translates the Wi-Fi to what I assume is low energy Bluetooth that communicates with our tap timer. 
This tap timer is connected to the Wi-Fi. I have it about 25 meters away from the Wi-Fi within line of sight as well. I've had to run a power cord to the corner of my house and I have an Ethernet over power Wi-Fi extender there as well to supply Wi-Fi to all of my wires cameras. If you have this device a fair distance from your house, just be aware that you will need line of sight and it doesn't go as far as Wi-Fi because it is Bluetooth low energy. This device here controls the water flow. Now it can be gravity water flow, it doesn't have to be high pressure, it just turns the water flow on and off according to the app timing or the moisture sensor reaching a threshold that you have set within the app. So this allows you to turn it on and off by a button here or it can be controlled by various if this then that scenarios that are automated within the app as you set it up. This is actually the hub that communicates with the moisture sensor. So the moisture sensor is communicating with this. That means that you can have the moisture sensor further away from the Wi-Fi point than this device. And that is how I have it set up. My moisture sensor is another 10 to 15 meters away from my Wi-Fi controller, which allows me to have that system 35 to 40 meters away from my house. The Wi-Fi socket, the Wi-Fi hub can control up to four of these devices, which individually can be controlled by four moisture sensing devices. You can have one moisture sensing device for each of the water timers. This allows you to have multiple hydroponic systems or watering systems controlled by multiple sensors. And this is the moisture sensor. The moisture sensor consists of three prongs, which when pressed into the substrate, take a reading of moisture, humidity, and temperature. So this sensor gives you feedback on the soil or cocoa or substrate moisture, which you can then set thresholds to control whether it gets watered or not. So you could have this on a timer that waters on a regular schedule and that schedule will be interrupted if the soil or media moisture goes above a certain threshold. We can use the lower end of the threshold to adjust our watering cycles so that we can fertigate our hydroponic nutrient into these pots and then when it reaches a threshold like 40 or 30 percent moisture we can then water again. This allows us to adjust our fertigation cycles to exactly what the plant requires because as the plant gets larger and the leaf surface area becomes greater it will start to transpire more, absorb more water and nutrients up, create more plant matter, and a positive feedback loop will occur, which this system will actually adjust to. So on your hotter days, the plants will absorb more water and nutrients, and this sensor will sense that that is happening, will alert our tap timer to water, and it will water at which point this sensor will actually sense at what percentage the media is saturated, where we can set another threshold so that it stops watering once it reaches 60 to 70 percent saturation. Now my recommendation would be to have this moisture sensor positioned on your largest plant. So I will be moving this moisture sensor over to this plant here because this plant is going to utilize the hydroponic nutrient before the other plants do. So that will just prevent this plant from drying out before our other plants because it has the largest surface area of leaves. 
therefore it will dry out first. I'd prefer to overwater the smaller plants than underwater the large plant. The app itself is extremely intuitive and it has some really nice graphs that you can utilize to understand the moisture content, temperature and humidity of the environment that your plant is within. And this is going to allow us to really fine tune our delivery of nutrients and water to these plants. I'm really excited for this system actually. And I think that we'll be able to utilize this smart irrigation system for a multitude of plants that I've been having trouble delivering nutrient to such as our citrus trees and larger plants that are really hard to design hydroponic environments for. And that's it. That is how you set up a smart self-watering, moisture sensing, irrigation, fertigation, hydroponic system for passion fruit, as well as a trellis that they can grow over well into the future without much intervention at all. This story is definitely not over. I am really excited for the future of this system and to give you feedback on how it performs. There was absolutely no collaboration between me and Holman. I just saw the potential of these devices for being applied within a hydroponic growing environment and really wanted to try them out myself for a plant that is going to get extremely thirsty in the summer months as the bulk surface area of the plant exponentially grows over the top of something like this. I love passion fruit and I cannot wait to get a bumper harvest from these guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Huchos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video if you liked the video so that you can get updates on this systems and systems like it. So happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.